Hi everybody and welcome back to Built Not Bought Campers and today I'm going to be giving you a tour around this one of the new projects it's, it's, it's a new project as in a conversion project but we've had it here a little while before I do that I need to have a quick chat let me go and sit down right now for the chat I just want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel Thank you for all the lovely comments and you know it's it's what makes this worthwhile doing and that's why I want to have a quick chat before I show you around um, the new project we're doing now as well as all the others I like to mix it up a little bit keep it going for you well anyway the reason I'm having this little chat with you is I watch a lot of YouTube videos and read a lot of the comments um, listen to what the creators say and it seems to be that there is a lot of negative comments out there um, more so than I even realized myself I've had a few um, one lately made me realize that I understand why some people let it get them down me I'm like a crocodile and I'll say it's like water off a crocodile's back not ducks back crocodiles back because one you just right run straight off me secondly when I'm coming through the water you don't see me coming and secondly I'll bite you on the way through so when I say these could negative comments they really don't bother me I'm too long in the tooth too old to even bother about them but <clears throat> do you know I had to analyze it just a little bit now I'm trying to think along the lines of the people making these comments <clears throat> why would you be slating somebody for what they're doing what they're not doing whether they're doing it wrong whether they're doing it right because a lot of it is pure slating it's not even advice and on one of my videos the comments got to almost an all-out war on my last video one of my last videos so you know i thought to myself i need to chat today and sort of let people what i think about it so I'm going to give you my opinion on your comments. Helpful criticism I can take. Great comments I can take. To be honest, I can take any comment. But to me, I don't think all the subscribers that really enjoy what I do should have to go through and listen, or even, not so much listen, have to read some slating comments, slanderous comments, that you know, the ridiculous, stupid comments that other people put. And like I said, it doesn't bother me, but I'm thinking of the subscribers, because I know there's one or two subscribers, it has bothered. They've even contacted me, they've messaged me about it. So that's why I'm having a chat today. So when I say to you, and all the subscribers that enjoy my channel, honestly, it doesn't bother me. People can say what they like about me, they can write what they like about me in the comments, it doesn't bother me so I'm gonna analyze it as if I'm that person making those sl slating slanderous comments and useless and unhelpful criticism so after analyzing it do you know what I can only imagine that these people's lives must be really sad lonely I don't know maybe they've got nothing else better to do that's why the ending on my videos say stay well stay safe and most of all stay happy do you know why because I am a happy person 95% of the time and the other 5% I choose not to be happy and do you know why that is good to have a little rant now and again it's good to have a good scream shout run around do whatever but I do it on my terms not because somebody else makes me that way I do it on my own terms so leads me to say do you know what? If you've got any helpful criticism, please give it to me. Any great comments, you know, great, give them to me. The useless comments, keep them to yourself. No one's interested. No one's bothered. No one wants to read them. Least of all, any of my other subscribers. And me, I'll just delete them if I have to. So let me say to you, keep all the comments nice, keep the helpful criticism coming in. I don't do everything perfect, 
I don't do everything the same way as anybody else. And it's like I watched somebody else, one of my friend's videos the other day, and you know, he's apparently he's had a lot of comments about people saying you should do it this way, you should do it that way. Do you know what? For different jobs, there's a many different ways to do things. And again, do you know what? Helpful criticism is good. Do you know? Because that way it helps the subscribers that are trying to find the right way to do something. But the damn right slating ones, a waste of time, waste of breath and a waste of energy. So I can only imagine you leave sad, lonely, boring, uneventful lives. That's all I can imagine. God knows why you'd be slating somebody on on any Facebook, on YouTube, anywhere. But to be honest, anyway, <clears throat> less of that. I've said enough about that. But again, I'm going to go back to those people that really, really matter to me. And the people, people, people that I really, really make this content for. And it's you subscribers, the ones that you know who you are. Um, motivate me to do this and I love it and all I'm gonna to say to you forget the haters I'm not gonna stop doing it nothing's gonna stop me making these videos and I will apologize now if I do things I will make mistakes and someone criticizing my business you know oh, I should be doing it this way I don't know any business or any single person out there that is 100% perfect. And I even said that in one of my other videos. And I said, if you are perfect and you think you're perfect, please comment below. I want to hear about your story. Believe me. Probably I'll even have you out on this channel chatting to me face to face. But the problem is, not one person commented saying they're perfect. And because no one's perfect, we all make mistakes. And on one of my videos, I made a mistake. I admitted to it. And it was down, you know, it's down to circumstances, but I corrected the mistake. It wasn't a big mistake, you know, but someone made a big thing out of it. Well, anyway, I did smile. I've had to chuckle to myself because a war started to brew through the comments. Anyway, it's just, it, it's made me, it has made me laugh. So, but I'm not going to stop. Don't worry, I'm not going to stop. I just wanted to let everybody know what I thought of certain comments. And all the haters and the naysayers that, you know, keep to yourself. If I have to review every single comment that comes on my channel, so be it. And, you know, I you know, I pray one day that you decide to come face to face with me and say it to my face. Do you know, I respect those people more that come up to here, nose to nose me and say, you're doing it wrong. You're useless. You're an idiot. Do you know, I've got more respect for that person than little keyboard warriors. Yeah, I've hurt my finger. Before anybody says anything, yes, I've hurt my finger. Yes, the haters have hurt my finger. And guess what? It wasn't van related. But if you want to say it is, go for it. But like I said, just the haters, shut up. Not interested. I've, you know, I've seen so many YouTubers stop their videos for a certain amount of time to get over the haters. You got CJ from um, Project Cat, Project Amber. Uh, you got Ash from Lost in Europe. Martin from House That's Not Homeless. Even Liam the Terrible. Everybody's saying about the haters. Do you know what? Good on you guys for saying what you do. Um, I'm going to leave links to their channels below. Do you know what? Because I think they're good. I like them channels. They're channels that I watch. Just That's just a few. There's loads. Camper Vibe. So yeah, I watch YouTube a lot. And yeah, I've learned a lot of YouTube. And that's why I'm trying to give a bit back on YouTube to people that want to build vans. Those that do themselves. Do you know what? I've had people come to me, I'll help them. Um, I've been to groups, I've been to a group, which I, you know, everybody knows about. And again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, South Central Build Get Together. Um, Darren does an amazing job there. And you know, Luke from Luke's Van Life is there. There's, and everybody is helpful, everybody is friendly. And anybody that turns up that's a hater, trust me, they won't last five seconds in that group. So, leads me to say, let's get on with the tour the new van not so new van but new project the van's been here a while it's not a new project not a new van but it's a new project and we started some work on it but before that let's rewind it back and give you the tour and then you can see towards the end what work we've done so let's do it we've just started to do something on it we're going to name this one the bullet the reason we called it the bullet is because it looks like a silver bullet and it is the Toyota Hiace. My little work number, I call this. But we've decided to turn this into a day van. 
I know we've got enough on our plate already, but let me give you a quick tour of it. So we go through the outside first, and then we go into the inside. Well, the Bullet is a 2005 Toyota Hiace. Long wheelbase, it's been used as a work van all its life but not for construction or anything like that. It's got some dodgy bits on it, of course, like any van, but that's not the dodgiest bit. That's the back of it. Nice dent in the door there. Take that horrible lock off. This is the interesting side. So, got some work to do down there sliding door so yeah this is going to be a day van of some sort not too sure what the look of it's going to be just yet what color it's going to be we're literally just sticking bits on paper at the moment it does have a roof rack so we'll utilize those points or that rack at some point The inside and it did fail its MOT but today luckily it passed only on one thing for a van this age only on one thing so we do have the double seats this side and the single seat that side although the seat is very 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 warm it's done 170,000 miles a lot of it was motor made way mileage. It does have the bulkhead. Um, nice little parcel shelf up the top there. So yeah. So yeah, we need to remove that bulkhead. All this wood paneling, the wood floor make a nice feature at that side step somehow I don't know how but and this is the back of it color wet patches these this was under a lino that was down here so yeah I've started stripping it out but before I fully stripped it I wanted to show you what it looks like anyway that's just a quick introduction to the silver bullet well we'll shorten it just to the bullet for now so there you go uh, welcome to the bullet that's what I'm gonna say welcome to the bullet and this is gonna be an interesting build going to try and keep it a bit of a budget build um, not too much of a budget but budgety enough so it's a realistic price for somebody to I don't know possibly even buy and um, yeah I don't know how long this is going to take how often the videos go out on it so if the Toyota Hiace weekend slash day van interests you please click the subscribe button put on the notification bell and keep an eye out for these videos. Right, I wasn't gonna actually film stripping out of this. Um, I've managed to take out the shelving unit and the front part of the floor already. One too bad, it's not been too bad, it's been quite easy. So, I'll let you see me strip out the rest of it. The floor anyway, and the wheel arches and that.
Right, the wood on each corner over here has rotted away. Same over here. Some serious wet patches. So we need to investigate those. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay. It's dirt and wet, but... So, both corners. Now, I'm wondering, judging by the look at the floor, if something's been spilt. And it's collected in the back. I will look underneath, but... This floor, really, isn't in a bad condition. Although it's only a covering over the floor, what I'm saying is, that's not even in too bad a condition, even just after pulling out the wood. I'm a happy little bunny. Again, another very, very cheap van. But by the time we finish with it, we'll look a million bucks. Am I kidding? I'm just trying to put a smile on your face. This stuff puts a smile on my face all the time. Anyway, so I'm going to give this a sweep up, hoover out, and um, before I do, the screws are pulled up out the back, which hold the metal thing in. They are completely rotted into them plastic holders. Look at the state of them. So yeah, so before we do anything to the floor, put a new floor in. So before we do anything to the actual floor, we've got some work to do on the floor. And you'll follow the process like you do with all my other bands. I hope you want to follow it anyway. If you're not following, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It doesn't cost a penny to subscribe. I'm not asking for money. I'm just asking you to watch my videos and take from it what you like and hopefully you do like it. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on with this because I wanna carry on waffling. I'll be here all day talking to you otherwise. We need to get the other flooring up now, the actual uh, original factory flooring. Let's see what's underneath. Right, so there you have it. The floor has now been stripped out and the wheel arch boxes and the shelving unit that was in there. Right. 
Any worrying bit is we've got a bit of rust here, but again, it's not much around this floor here. But again, I rub it and it's all coming off. So let me get a wide brush on that to have a quick look at it. Right, it was very wet in that corner. And it was very wet in that corner, not as wet. But these tie down points are in pretty good condition. That's where the screw holes were. So there's no holes. visible holes in the floor so my suspicions are either these holes where the screws are was letting the water in um, maybe something to do with the tie down point on that side um, the same over this side it's extremely rusty around the tie down point very solid metal there's no hole going through so that needs to come out, and again, just surface rust over here. But again, the holes where the screws are, they've actually stayed in this one. I had to snap them off in there. If it's not the screw holes, then my blame would be the door sill. So my aim with this van Especially around the bottom here at the back, because that all the way along the back here was absolutely soaked. So my suspicions are the door's not sealing properly. And let's wait, look, look at the doors. It's absolutely had it. The doors, the doors are still around here. Even around here, look, it's had it. So it's hanging off here. So I'm edging my bets on that. So first thing to do with this van as well will be to replace that rubber door seal sort the floor out but all in all the floor is in an extremely good condition apart from the back here all the tie down points up there look brand new so for a 2005 van this is in a very 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 good condition so yeah Right, so let's show you what we've done to the Toyota. As you can see, that rear rusty lock has now been removed and the holes filled. Some dents have been taken out the back door and some fill has been put down the bottom there. And also we've removed the bumper. Let's unlock it and open it up. Inside now is totally stripped out, apart from the roof lining, that's the last job to do in here. And the rust work around the back of the doors has been done. Any holes inside the van has also been sorted. This rubber trim around the outside is the original. We have ordered one and it will be replaced as soon as it arrives. Right, so down on the side here, as you can see, so fiberglass work has now been done on that rear dent, it's the huge one, and the door's now been replaced with a new red door. There used to be one of those horrible harsh blocks there as well, where the, that was, the dent had been taken out of there and filled, and also down the bottom there where was a dent where it started on the door that's been filled as well. So the plan for this one, do you know I'm not too sure about a bed yet, but I am certain that I want to put a kitchen against this bulkhead. That's my thought so far, it's the only thought I've had on this van. And, but there's loads to be done. Anyway, that's all we've done on the van right now. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update on that. As I say, I know it's been tagged onto the end of the introduction video, but it just shows you we started on it and what we're gonna be doing. Right, okay everybody, that's all we've got time for today. That is Bullet. And you can see the work we've done already. 
and if you got a Toyota High Ace and you trans you'll transform it into a camper or converting it, do anything to it, let me know. Leave your comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button because it don't cost a penny to do that. I don't want money from you. I don't want anything like that. Just subscribers. People watch my videos. Take thoughts from it. Make, you know, put it in drone vans. I, you know, that's why I do this stuff. Besides that, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying well. And most of all, especially from the beginning of this video, I hope you're staying happy. Be happy. Bye for now.